then you multiply the r into this, and it'll be ar. And then you'll left, be left with cr is equal to vb. So the requirement then for the differential equation to be satisfied for all times is that this needs to be 0. So there has no time dependence. It needs to equal the voltage of the battery, right? So this needs to be 0. And from there, we get a certain restriction on what the, uh, let's see here, uh, A factors out. And B, it gives us a restriction on what, what, on what B needs to be. B needs to be equal to negative R over uh, L. So that's this one. It gives, uh, it gives us the restriction into the B. And then this one, CR needs to be equal to VB. Therefore, it gives us a restriction on what the C must be. So this is the same way that we did the uh, solution of the, uh, the other differential equation, right, with the RC circuit. So then you get uh, I must be equal to A, E to the B was going to be negative R over L, T plus C is going to be VB over R. And then what's the restriction on the A? That depends on the initial conditions. What's the initial current? Well, when we close the circuit, initial current is going to be 0, right, we said, because the inductor is going to uh, oppose you. So the initial current needs to be 0. So put 0 here. That's going to be A. Either the 0 is 1. So the restriction on the A is negative VB over R. So my final answer for the current is VB over R factors out. And I'm left with 1 minus e to the negative RT over L. So that's my final answer for what the current should look like, the actual equation of the current. Now let's see if it behaves as what we predicted based on our logic. Okay. If I put the current uh, initially 0 uh, at t equal to 0, so i of t equal to 0, what does it give me? e to the 0, 1 minus 1, so it does give me 0. And then what's the final current should be? As t goes to infinity, so as t goes to infinity, e to the negative infinity, so that goes to 0, so you have 1, so the current approaches. VB over R, which is what we predicted. So it approaches VB over R asymptotically. So the current does look like exactly what we predicted. It starts with 0, asymptotically reaches VB over R. Now, what's the time constant of the circuit? What's the tau? OK? We got, in order for us to solve for what the tau is, we got to um, rewrite this so that it looks like this. We got to rewrite it so that it looks like 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, where tau is the, in, in units of seconds. So that in a, in one tau, in a time of equal to one tau, the current should uh, be equal to 63% of its maximum value, right? When uh, t equals tau, the current is equal to, and then when you do this, 1 minus e to the negative 1, you get 63%, OK? 63% of, uh, uh, of uh, Vb over r. So we didn't want time constant. Uh, no, it should appear something like this. 63% uh, is about right here. So here's one time constant graphically. Within two time constants, uh, 
what's the percentage? I think it's like 95% when we did it uh, back in chapter 26. 96. So within two time constant, it has already charged uh, quite a bit. I mean, the current has reached quite a bit of its maximum. Okay? So then, So how can we rewrite that equation so that it looks like t over tau? So what's my tau going to be? So when I rewrite it, it's got to be L over R. That's my tau. So my tau in an LR circuit is L over R. My tau in an uh, RC circuit is RC. Now, the other way we can show that this needs to be uh, tau is that we can prove that this has units of seconds. Inductance over resistance has units of seconds. If we can show it has units of seconds, it makes sense that it's tau. Henry's divided by ohms should have units of seconds. Now, what is a Henry? It's voltage divided by rate of change of current, right? So Henry is volts divided by amp per second. Come on, let's work this out. Come on. Volts divided by amp is ohm. Ohm, ohm cancel, one over second. Ah, OK? So this thing is, uh, is uh, ohm. Beautiful. So we don't even need a formal proof. You can show that tau is L over R. Okay. Uh, let's do that now. Let's.